Hi, I'm the SOLIDWORKS nerd, and today let's talk about the CSWA exam. This is the Certified SOLIDWORKS Associate exam. It proves that you have some competency when it comes from modeling, that someone could give you a drawing and you can make it in a reasonable period of time. This can be good for getting a job as a resume booster or just for self-improvement. At any rate, let's get into the 12 tips. The first one is kind of a simple one, and I think it's geared more towards those who pick up SOLIDWORKS just for fun, but are looking to bring it to the next level. But make sure you are able to read an engineering drawing. This is super important because when you get into the exam, that's how they're going to give you the prompt for making the models. As well as, they, there may be some questions about drawing uh, views. For example, you need to know what a broken out section view or what a crop view is. Um, at any rate, I'll put a li link in the description that um, goes to over those pretty well if you want to refresh around any of those. Anyway, let's go on to number two and make sure you read all the text walls. Um, you're going to go into a question and on the left side there's going to be a brick of text. And you're just going to want to skim through it, but I find that's kind of dangerous and you may uh, miss some critical information such as um, changes in the material or things like that. At any rate, just, just read the entire text wall and it'll make sure that you don't miss anything crucial that you need to change or something that you need to set. For number three, please make sure you're in the right units. Make sure you're just paying attention to those so you can make, so you can change it appropriately or else your parts will be off by a factor of 25.4. Nobody wants that. Number four, this is one of the most important ones. Please, please, please change the material of the part. And for every single question, just make sure that the material of the part is what you think it is. When you make a solid model and they ask you for its final mass, more than likely, um, in the multiple choice questions, there will be a multiple choice question that, if you model it perfectly, and that's awesome, if you model it perfectly, and you forget to change the material of the part, the SOLIDWORKS undefined material has a density, therefore it'll give you a mass. And that mass may be one of those options, so it may be, may be a little trap, so materials, change it. For number five, look ahead in the exam. You can scroll through all the questions that you need. This is pretty important, and I don't, and I don't think a lot of people do this. That way you can design your parts and you know what changes are going to be made. You can design your parts in such a way that they will not break when those changes are, are made. And, that, and that's pretty important. That's, that'll save you a lot of time that you're not just debugging, debugging your part file. For number six, make sure that all the dimensions on the drawing are considered. I don't think I've ever taken a SOLIDWORKS exam where they gave me a piece of red herring information. Every, every piece of information must be used, meaning that if you start up a sketch and you're, you, draw, you draw the shape, whatever it needs to be, you're adding dimensions wherever they need to be, and you get to the last dimension, and then you see it's fully defined before you add that dimension, it means that a relation snuck its way in there and it needs to go away. They don't give you redundant information and, all, and they design their questions so well that all the information is there. For number seven, make sure you perform global variables correctly. And this is, this, is an, this is an easy one to miss. So in a lot of the exams, and especially in the practice one, you can see how they use that there. You can set global variables in order to quickly change dimensions of the part. For example, you could set A to 75 millimeters and so on and so forth. And then in the second part, they will change, oh, A is now 65 millimeters. And then you can just go into equations, um, change them, hit rebuild, and it'll be done. Just make sure that when you set a dimension to coincide with the global variable, that you type the equal sign in the, in the spin box. If you, don't, if you don't type equals A, in the spin box, it'll just it'll just default to whatever A happens to be at the time. So if you put equals A, 
and it'll say 75 millimeters and you know you did this right because you will see a little red sigma if you don't see that red sigma then it's not properly linked and you need to fix that but that's fixed by just putting the equal sign in there if you leave it without it so if you just put a in the spin box it'll be 75 millimeters and you'll keep building apart and then question two might say it's 65 millimeters now you change it that dimension is not going to change it's just going to stay 75 millimeters so that equal sign is very important make sure you perform global variables correctly and number eight and I may make a video about this too but I think one of the most common mistakes is that um, people try and do too much with one sketch seriously guys sketches are free use as many as you need and it just has the benefit is is that if you try and do the entire profile of some complicated part it just gets really hard to staple down properly to get that fully defined without all these errors and conflicting relations so just keep the sketches as simple as possible and yeah I'll probably make a video on how my thought process runs into breaking those up number nine this this kind of follows make sure all your sketches are fully defined and yeah this kind of ties in with make sure all the dimensions in the drawing are considered but you yeah, know when I took the CSWA there was one dimension I didn't consider and then I just thought back to my training it's like make sure all your sketches are fully defined I looked at one so why is this underdefined it turns out there was like a chamfer that I drew that just got really really small and I barely noticed it and I would have gotten the question wrong had I not caught that mistake so just make sure you can expand all your your sketches switch to flat tree view or something like that so you can see all your sketches and if you see a minus sign in between the parentheses in the design tree you need to put more relations you're missing something so you need to go back and and rectify that so for number 10 you're gonna build the parts and you're gonna be asked something like for its center of mass or its mass it's usually the mass properties and in the CSWA they're very nice and they give you a multiple choice question make sure your mass matches exactly I'm talking about less than a hundredth of a gram I would say because if you choose oh oh I'm three grams off and I choose this option I may get that question right but then the question right after that is a fill in the blank and that's where you're gonna run into some trouble because the multiple choice really is it's a check to see if you did your solid model correctly if it doesn't match any of the answers please go back and use these other tips to check underdefined sketches um, th things of that nature just make sure you type everything correctly too for number 11 for every single question hit save as because what the exam wants to test is that you can build the model and then make changes to it very easily this will involve using the model you have already created as you should but make sure you save as every question like I usually before I start the exam I make a new folder somewhere call it the CSWA exam and then every question I'll type question one and then do the stuff and then as soon as I type my answer or select a multiple choice option I'll hit save as and then question two and then make those changes if afterwards if you didn't do so well or you missed a question you're like well, how, how did I miss this you can actually go back and refer and look at your model and see if you can pull out any mistakes so yeah save as parts for every question and you may need to go back too if something something breaks really bad but hopefully you won't have to do that and I will emphasize this as tip number 12 if a part breaks don't start over <laughs> Do everything you can to repair the sketch, or re repair your part. Usually it's just a lot faster, and, and it's, yeah, it's scary when you um, make a change and you get this, this whole laundry list of errors that you need to tend to. But, yeah, just go start at, top, at the top of the tree and see if you can um, get the first failing feature and see if you can fix it and just work your way down. A lot of the times it'll just be the topmost feature that fails and causes other features to fail. May not be not may not be as bad as it looks is what I'm saying. And I'll make a video actually about how to repair broken parts and tips for diagnosing that. Well, with that, 
this concludes my tips for the CSWA. So if you're if you're about to take that, I wish you good luck. Um, just practice, 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 and I know you guys can do it. All right, that's it from the SolidWorks nerd. Have a good day. Raina. Oh. Kit. All right, I'll put you down there.